I gotta pinch myself pretty much every day and remind myself how lucky I am to jump in a, a blue and gold plane, you know? Definitely have a long history of aviation and also, well, aviators and engineers in my family were the two routes really uh, that you would take, but grew up uh, initially in Sunnyvale, California. My father was a Navy pilot, flew P3s out of Moffett Field. Um, from there, uh, we moved to Napa, California. He, he worked for United, uh, flew out of San Francisco uh, for a long time. So the majority of my time growing up was in Napa, California. I grew up watching the Blue Angels, loved every minute of it, and it's just kind of one of those things that it's the long-term investment the Blue Angels have, and it definitely worked on me. Being about an hour away from San Francisco, that was our favorite show to go to. Uh, we would just try to find the tallest parking structure in downtown San Francisco somewhere um, and, and watch it from there. And really in San Francisco, there's not a bad place to watch the Blue Angels because they're, they're coming from all different angles, you know. But I, I still, like yesterday, I can remember every year doing that and I just it's something I look forward to all the time. And Fat Albert was definitely one of my favorites uh, going into it, so it was just pretty cool seeing that plane and seeing what it can do. It's pretty neat. College, I went to, uh, the first two years I went down to uh, Mesa Community College in San Diego, um, where I lived with my brother. He's also a Marine pilot as well. From there, I transferred up to Sacramento State, uh, completed my training at Officer Candidate School during those uh, two summers. You graduate college, and then you go to what's called the basic school back in Quantico, Virginia, and that's really six months of just learning how to be uh, a rifle platoon commander on, on the ground. It has nothing to do with flight school, nothing with aviation. It's just how to be a, a Marine Corps officer and giving you those tools to carry with you. Um, and then from there, that's when I, I moved down to Pensacola. Um, I was an air contract, so I had a slot in flight school. Went to VT-6, um, awesome squadron, had a great experience in primary. I uh, got my first choice C-130s. I wanted C-130s the, uh, throughout primary. I thought it was just an incredible aircraft, awesome missions. You get to travel, um, you're trusted as like a junior officer to take a crew on the road around the world uh, in, in that aircraft. So that was my number one choice, got it. Um, went through advanced multi-engine training with the T-44 out in, uh, here in Corpus, uh, which was a great time as well. And then from there, selected uh, Miramar, California for my first uh, duty station in the C-130. I checked into VMGR 352, the Raiders out in uh, Miramar. Great squadron with a lot of history. From there, I deployed twice. Uh, the first deployment was to the Middle East. That was really at the height of ISIS in 2015, 2016 timeframe. It was a six month deployment for the first one. Came home for about seven to eight months, and then I was asked to uh, deploy early uh, again for another six months as an aircraft commander. So generally, the way it was working out is you do one tour, one uh, deployment as a co-pilot, second deployment as an aircraft commander. So I was extremely lucky timing. I got to do both. Uh, definitely a little bit of a soul searching. Before you jump in that plane, you're like, okay, I can't screw this up. You know, it, it, definitely the trust and confidence is there from from higher and our commanding officer is very, uh, as a junior captain, you're, you're, you're trusted to do that. So really cool uh, deployment and experience. I'm, I'm glad uh, I got the opportunity to do it. I was also forward deployed to Japan uh, for about two years following that tour with the VMGR 352 Raiders. I checked into VMGR 152, the Sumos, and I was with them for about a year and a half. Like I said, I grew up watching the Blue Angels and I've had so much respect for the organization and what they do. It was kind of like a, a moment where I was at uh, the sumo was out in Japan, you know, I was like, they select pilots from the fleet, so why can't I? You know, there was a little bit of self-doubt there first, you know, those, those guys are amazing. Those, those men and women that are on that team are incredible. I don't know if I could ever do that. So uh, from then on, I was like, okay, I'm doing this. I'm gonna drop an application and see where it goes from there. And I will have that regret for the rest of my life if I never do this, so time to put my money where my mouth is and, and put myself out there, you know, with completely with the potential of me not getting selected and being crushed from that, you know, that would be an experience that would just be tough for sure. So I called in uh, at, at some weird hour of the night with the time zone change and difference. Um, and uh, they definitely tricked me thinking that I wasn't going to make the team. I was, you know, hey, at least I tried, you know, I'm thinking 
how I'm going to tell my family and everything. And then he's like, you know, and they told me I made the team from there. And I was just, it was a little bit, uh, you know, in shock at first. Like, I can't believe I'm going to be a Blue Angel. It's pretty cool. So the number one mission is just to support any logistical movements for the team. Um, that could be anywhere from just being on call to pick up parts uh, at each show site. Say, you know, Jack goes down, needs a new engine. We got to go pick up an engine right now. Go um, wherever it's at. So uh, really, we just take the number one thing at each show site, six pallets worth of maintenance gear, parts, aircraft parts and tools, along with up to 45, 47 uh, maintenance personnel. Um, so they're crammed in there pretty good uh, around the pallets. And then our second secondary mission is, is demonstration as well. So if we're able to and you know everything's good, uh, we'll, we'll generally start the show off with uh, about an eight minute long demonstration with the C-130J. It was definitely a bit disappointing at first, just because I went from the khaki newbie phase where it was like, go, 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 you know, and then you go to the COVID hits and then we're trying to figure out what can we and can't we do. Um, and it was just kind of like a little bit of a time there where there's a lot of uncertainty. Spreading our mission uh, at each show site uh, and not being able to really do that was, it was definitely a gut punch a little bit. Um, but we got creative with some things and, you know, Operation America Strong was a big one for us with all the flyovers we did. A salute to the nurses, doctors, everyone involved with, uh, the, you know, the front line against the fight against COVID was just something we want to do something, you know, to help uh, give them like, hey, we, we want to thank you for everything you're doing. It's an incredible job. It's a very, very difficult job for what they do. But going into that, there was just a whole lot of work to make that happen um, safely is the number one thing. Um, so you, you got to be able to clear the airspace. There's a lot of logistical movements. You got to make sure you have a logistical backup in case one of the jets have to divert somewhere. So you have to have that all planned out laid flat and so my job was to help coordinate and make sure we had a logistical platform in the absence of Fat Albert in order to support that mission and be there in case one of the jets had to divert for any maintenance issues. Luckily they didn't and that's really just a testament to our maintenance crew. Zero jets diverted during each one of those flyovers and that just goes, it really is just proof that we have some incredible men and women on the team that kind of maintain these jets. This is definitely gonna be a team that'll go down in history, I think. It's, it's just a very special uh, team, I wanna say, uh, just with that, having that experience and people really putting their heads together and coming up with creative ways. And I'm just grateful. It was, we, we figured it out, I think it was awesome. The team model, it, it was getting old and we wanted to help represent what the Marine Corps and the VMGR community really had. And it was the J model, like they were all in on the Super Hercules now and that thing was doing incredible stuff. I would experienced it, I'd done it in the Marine Corps with the J model and I knew what it could do for the Blue Angels. So uh, pretty cool to you know, get the, the word that, hey, they've acquired the C-130J. It's in England. So that was pretty surprising at first. You know, It's such a critical asset to the Marine Corps. They can't afford to take one from a fleet squadron. And they also can't wait for one to come off the assembly line. I joined the team knowing that that was gonna happen um, and that was purchased. So. I kind of knew, all right, well, I'm probably going to be involved with flying out to England to FCF this thing and bring it back. And sure enough, uh, I was lucky enough to do that. And that was a pretty fun experience. Cool experience and also challenging due to the COVID. It was like at the height of COVID and we're flying out to England to FCF a plane and bring it back across uh, the Atlantic. So I hadn't seen it, honestly, until pretty close to when we picked it up. Um, so I knew there was a new paint scheme um, and I just hadn't seen it yet. So they kind of wanted to make a little bit of surprise, I guess, with uh, Bo Mayberry, the, the prior M1. He, uh, he showed me a picture of it and I was like, that's perfect. Because we definitely wanted to break it out and make sure it, it is a different aircraft. The J model really is a lot different with the new upgraded propellers, which you know offer up to 20% more thrust, which is pretty significant, just the props alone. Um, and then. The engines, upgraded engines, Rolls-Royce engines, and then the avionics, the HUD is also really nice. So uh, it's just kind of same airframe, but the guts are completely changed. Uh, the first flight I still remember was just, you know, a lot of nervousness going into it. I hadn't flown a slick C-130J. I know those planes fly a little bit differently because no external pods, no external tanks on it. 
It's a lot less drag on the plane, and it's also a lot wider. You know, we don't have all the uh, the stuff, the combat loaded stuff we usually throw in a KC 130J. Its uh, empty weight is, you know, 10 to 15,000 pounds lighter than a fleet aircraft, and then it also doesn't have the pods and externals on it. So the thing, you know, set takeoff power, and uh, it just jumps right off the deck, you know, within a couple thousand feet for that first takeoff. And that's when I was like, oh, this plane is fast. It was just a cool experience overall. So did that um, and then flew it home via Iceland, Bangor, Maine, and then uh, back to Fort Worth from there to complete the acceptance inspections on the Marine side and uh, get it integrated into the Blue Angels. So kind of history from there. Now we're uh, back in business full up now. It's been a while. You haven't exercised that muscle in a long time. Jumping back into the show circuit in the season has been at first, we, there's concerns there, you know, we haven't done it in a while. So Lakeland, Florida was a great show to start out at with how massive that air show is and the excitement. And you can tell there's a hunger uh, out there amongst the public that they want air shows. One big difference, I think, from the demo uh, and the T-Model right now is just a lot of things internal to the plane. The way the, the, the crew resource management works and how we talk to each other in the plane. The flight engineer's role is a little bit different. The co-pilot's role is a little bit different, and now I have a lot more SA in front of my face with a HUD. Um, so I guess I'm not as reliant on the right seat to call out visual checkpoints for me because I can't see. I'm looking at a ceiling if I'm turning right. And in my scan is I got to look around, move my head in the team model, whereas the J, it's all in front of my face in the HUD. So it's pretty cool to be able to get your lines in for each maneuver and uh, you don't have to look around for the airspeed or alt altitude and then relying on the guy in the right seat to make sure you're you're not lining up on a line you shouldn't be lining up on or whatever. Um, so a lot more tools to your advantage that you can use in the J. And also the, the flight engineer used to run the power levers in the T model, now it's the right seat that runs the power levers in the, the J model for the demo. Traditionally in the fleet, we would never do that. Uh, the right seat wouldn't touch, it. the pilot flying, he's got the power levers and the, and the yoke. And the, in the demo, um, the right seat will run the throttles uh, for the entire demo. So. And that's just for you to control the plane better from the left seat with the, the rolling rates and everything. But it takes a lot of practice to get there because it's kind of like two brains flying one plane, working as one. So teamwork is such an incredible aspect of it. Um, you know, we preach teamwork in the fleet and everything, but in the Blue Angels, that is just what we live, you know, every day. I love every second of it. And it's, it's just, it's a pretty cool, every day you kind of have to just relive that day like, oh, what did I do today? You know, you put your head on a pillow and you're just like, I'm pretty lucky, you know, pretty cool um, to have this opportunity and, and all the experiences you had, the exchanges you had with people that you hadn't met before. Um, that's the best part, I think, it's pretty neat. <laughs>